I love the UK, but there's definitely some things that shocked me when I got here. And probably the first one is how much nature there is. You know, when you think of going to the UK, a lot of us tourists think about going to London, but really the UK is so much more. And being here in Northern England, I'm just shocked by the number of parks and cycling routes and just nature that there is everywhere, even in a big city like Manchester. But unfortunately with that comes some allergies and it seems like I've gotten allergies for the first time in my life being here in the spring and i guess it's hay fever because a lot of my friends have it as well and from what they've said it's caused a lot by these yellow rapeseed oil flowers that are in bloom everywhere so yeah i've been having like all the symptoms i'm sure you know what they are if you had them too like itchy watery eyes and sneezing and stuffy nose and stuff like that so been suffering a little bit from that <laughs> that i didn't expect but fortunately the medicine here is really cheap and like you can get allergy medicine over the counter for like 50 cents or 50p or one pound or something something that i'm still adjusting to is how friendly the people are here in northern england it's genuinely shocking after two months of being here i still haven't fully adapted to this aspect like I'm still caught off guard when strangers just say hiya or the guy at the flower shop is like hello love like as if he knows me and it just kind of permeates every level of society from just people walking down the street or out in the forest to the people working at the airport, uh, people in shops, restaurants, and even new friends that you make. I've been just so blown away by how kind and generous the people are. Like people who I've only known for a couple days or a couple weeks and they're like offering to pick me up at the train station or take me to the airport or help me with stuff, with, with my career and hobbies and mentor me in music production. And like, when's the last time that one of your friends offered to take you to the airport, right? Like, it doesn't happen. They just be like, get an Uber. But here, it's people are like, like, what can I do to help you? Or do you want to come to this house party? Do you want to meet my friends? Do you want me to introduce you to these people? And don't say it's just because I'm a girl. <laughs> like, it's, it's everyone. And just the other day, I was um, having drinks with my friends, <laughs> my friends that I've known for, like, two weeks. And one of the guys that was there named Mark. He was really cool. And he left and my other friend was like, oh no, like Mark's leaving. And he had just met him the day before and they are two British guys and they had bonded in one day and had become the best of friends. And like other guys that I've met that have been friends for two weeks, like everyone treats each other the same, whether you've known them for two weeks or two months or 20 years. The other day I was just walking through this neighborhood called Ancoats and People were just waving to each other, smiling, like security guards, people sitting at tables. And I ended up in this 15 minute conversation with a woman who was just standing outside of a restaurant. And that just, that kind of stuff just doesn't happen where I'm from. Coming here to this park, some guy passed me on his bike and he's like, oh, sorry. People apologize for even passing you on the sidewalk. So it's kind of funny, but I, I really like it. I have noticed, however, that people are also really blunt. <laughs> this is most noticeable in restaurants, actually. I, I can't tell you how many people I've heard send stuff back to the kitchen because it wasn't right. The eggs are too cold, the bread wasn't toasted enough, whatever. But it's not like they're complaining, it's just that they're being very assertive. And whereas people do that in the United States as well, I think we're more likely to just kind of suck it up and be like, oh, this isn't what I ordered, but I'll just eat it anyway. Or everyone else has their food, so you don't want to send it back. <laughs> but here, no, people are like, this is wrong, take it back. So they do like to joke as well and kind of like give you a hard time, especially me, because I don't know what they're saying half the time with all of the slang. So if people do that to you, then don't take it personally. I'm also shocked at how safe I feel here. It isn't something that I really thought much about before I left the US, but now that I'm here, like I really just feel so safe. Like not only are there no wild animals out to get you, but you don't have to worry about guns and even being out in parks and trails by yourself, that can be very dangerous in the US. 
and I would never feel comfortable hiking by myself there, but here I do. And um, people say like in my neighborhood, they're like, you don't have to lock your door here. And that's definitely not the case in Florida. So that has been shocking in the best way. All right, and we gotta talk about the food, you guys, because I am still shocked at how good the food tastes here. I'd just been back in the US for a few months and was kind of just getting used to the tasteless bland food and the kind of not ripe fruits and vegetables. And then coming here, everything just tastes so much better. I found out that the UK is among the top 10 countries in the world with the highest food quality standards. So that's definitely a good thing, but on the flip side, the food also goes bad really fast, which means it's fresher, which means it probably has less preservatives, probably less modification. I've noticed that the sell-by dates and the consume-by dates are a lot shorter than they are in the U.S. Fruits and vegetables go bad within a couple days, whereas in the U.S. you can get away with shopping like once a week. And the chicken goes bad really fast, like one or two days you better cook whatever chicken or meat that you bought. And I actually read that in the UK, it's um, not allowed to spray the chicken with chlorine, which is allegedly an acceptable practice in the US. So that might have something to do with it. The first day I bought chicken and I didn't cook it for two days and it was already starting to look off. I also read that they treat their animals a lot better here with more compassion compared to the factory farming in the US. So that is a really good thing. And I've also noticed that even though the Brits liked their baked goods, that the food doesn't taste as sweet. And that could be because of the recent sugar tax. But then on the other hand, which is weird, I've noticed a lot of foods have fake sugar, like artificial sweeteners in them, which is not so good. So I'm not really sure what the story is there. It's even hard to find sparkling water that doesn't have artificial sweeteners and flavorings in it. So maybe they cut back on real sugar and started using fake sugar. I don't know. They also have American style pancakes in plastic wrap, which is really sacrilegious. Pancakes should be made fresh, but you can find them in the bread section and also in the refrigerated section. But I have not been daring enough to try them yet. Speaking of food, another thing that really surprised me was seeing so many couples together shopping in the grocery store. You wouldn't think that that would be weird to me, but coming from the US, I think I'm just used to one person going because either one person in the relationship more takes on the role of going grocery shopping or even if both people could go, it wouldn't be very efficient or productive for two people to go and one person can go. So I've thought that it's very adorable to see couples shopping together and it's like really good teamwork, you know? They're checking out the food, they're reading the labels, checking the prices and discussing what they're going to buy together and it's like a family affair and for some reason that's weird to me but if you're from england you probably think that's normal the recycling is also really impressive here i've gotten so used to composting that i don't know how i'm going to go back to normal life in the u.s without it or anywhere in the world for that matter there's not that many countries that have this level of composting and recycling but i think most of them are probably in europe but I have five different recycling bins at my house and in the US we have one and like most of that's not actually recycled. So here in my neighborhood, they recycle around 70 to 80% of all of the trash. Whereas in the US, the national average is more like 32%. And that includes a lot of trash that's not actually recycled, like trash that they burn or trash that's collected at construction sites and things like that. So. I don't know. I, I wish that more countries would invest in greener ways uh, to reduce waste. And it's just been really impressive here how they do things. A lot of things just seem to make logical sense here. Maybe it's that British sensibility, but even things I noticed like going to the airport where in the US it's kind of a free for all with cars blocking each other and people trying to get out on the streets. Whereas here they just have these little diagonal parking places where everyone can park and drop off people and then be on their way without blocking the road. So I don't know why <laughs> in the US we haven't done anything like that. Maybe it's for security reasons, but if you've ever been to LAX or 
New York or Miami International or really like any major airport, you know what I'm talking about. And I was shocked the first time I got to Manchester and I saw people just leisurely parking in front for a minute, dropping off their guests and then being on their way with no stress. They also have a lot of common sense signage around, whether it's road signs or ads that you'll see on a bus stop or on the side of the road or a sign that someone put on the bathroom door or something that's broken. It's kind of like, it seems like the signage is here is just kind of talking to you matter of factly, or if it's something like from the NHS, from the National Health Service, It'll be just, you know, some practical information that you might want to know. And there's some way that they go about writing the signs where you just feel like it's very direct versus in the U.S. everything seems like it's marketing to you. One thing that I'm definitely still getting used to is walking or biking on the left side of the road. I just feel a little disoriented all the time and I feel like I look back and forth like 10 times before I cross the street. And even your bike brakes are on opposite sides of the bike. So I learned that really quickly, the back brake and the front brake are reversed. So very good to know. I'm also still working out Fahrenheit to Celsius conversions in my head. I think Fahrenheit makes sense, but my friend says it's confusing. He probably has a point. I guess it is more straightforward in Celsius because zero is freezing and 32 is hot. Whereas in Fahrenheit, 32 is freezing and zero is more freezing and 80 or 100 is hot. So you be the judge. I'm also getting used to the lack of climate control around here, which is pretty strange for someone from the US, especially Florida. Fortunately, there is heating in most buildings, but what you won't find is air conditioning. Maybe in some of the big office buildings and some of the more modern buildings, but not in most houses and not in most stores and even small hotels or large hotels. So that's definitely taken some getting used to. Even the big department stores like Zara won't have air conditioning. So it's a bit weird for an American like me, but um, I'm adapting. The scary thing is that People didn't need air conditioning here for most of history, but it seems that things are getting a lot hotter these days. So even though people are definitely enjoying the sunny and warm weather, it's, it's a bit scary to think of like how warm it actually is in Europe these days. But what's probably shocked me the most is the price of housing here. Now I know that London is expensive, but I didn't expect the market to be so competitive in Manchester. I've heard that it could be because a lot of people are moving out of London to Manchester in search of cheaper housing. So maybe that's putting some upward pressure on the prices, but also it seems like the UK is in a housing crisis in general in most of the country. And this has to do with a lot of reasons from a lack of building houses to general inflation, population growth, and just higher demand. But I was so surprised at how competitive it was here, even to the point that if you go to an open house, there could be 30 other people competing with you for the same property. And that's something that you would see in New York or LA. I didn't expect that here and the prices were really high, the, the market's super competitive, and it might even be that the landlords and the rental agencies don't even reply to your inquiries, which is just crazy. But I mean, Manchester is the second biggest city in the UK, so there's a lot of people here looking for housing, but that is a problem that I definitely didn't anticipate to the degree that it is here. But anyway, what shocked you the most when you came to the UK? Or are you a local and you can help me make some sense of these cultural differences? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new here and click over here to see what shocked me the most about Ireland.